Fresh Art International presents Fresh Talk, conversations about creativity in the 21st century. I'm Kathy Bird, Fresh Art producer, and today I'm in Austin, Texas with artist Jack Sanders. He's from Cleburne, Texas, and studied at Auburn University and the University of Texas. Jack is the founder of Design Build Adventure a company offering services including design, construction, and project management, but also he includes in his list of services public art, adventure planning, storytelling, and dreaming. I just, I love that description on your site. And I noticed that you studied with Sam Mockby, and everything you do from what I've learned about you so far has seems to be profoundly influenced by the time you spent with him and the rural studio. You've even co-produced a documentary film about him, so I'd really love to know more about that. Okay. Well, I'm just one of those people that wasn't real clear on what I was going to do and, you know, ended up at Auburn University just without a lot of direction. I think, you know, a guidance counselor who I'd told I wanted to study art suggested architecture, and I ended up in an architecture program and was asking a lot of questions about whether I should be there and contemplating maybe film school and ended up without knowing that I had landed at at Auburn University just at a really amazing time, you know, not many years after Samuel Mockby had started the Rural Studios. And to get to leave campus and go to the, you know, the the smallest, the small town in Alabama, one of the poorest counties in Alabama, and and get to work with with Sambo Mockby and with the community, with Hale County, Alabama and the residents there, just immediately, it was like I don't care what degree is going to come of the become of this. This is what this is what I want to be doing for sure, and I was hooked. And I went back and did my thesis work out there. So I was I spent a good portion of my architectural education at Auburn in Hale County, Alabama. And for the most part, I think Design Build Adventure and all the work that we've been doing since then has been trying to maintain the. The spirit and the excitement and the enthusiasm that that we all had at that time, it was such a it was kind of a running joke at our in our program that it was all downhill from there. You know, even Sambo would joke with us about that because he knew how much fun we were having. It just was a joy to to work maintaining that sense of wonder that he had created for us as 18 19 20 year olds it's kind of been a challenge for me personally and i think the adventure part of design build adventure that's 100 percent what it's related to my particular story was you know we leave the main campus and as a second year architecture student leave the the bars and the football games and the you know greek life and move to a town that really had the type of poverty that probably most of us didn't know existed. And we moved directly into that community and started to interact with people and, and use the energy that we had to to design and build. On the weekends, the building would slow down and you would just start to just try to find things to do. Was it, whether it was the, you know, to get invited to church with somebody or to go to, a, you know, somebody's house for dinner or to go to a local club or whatever you could do to kind of become a part of the, you know, the community. And after being there for several months, on, I stayed in for a weekend and on a Sunday I got invited to, I met a guy at, a, at the Piggly Wiggly, the local grocery store, and and he said, would you like to go to a baseball game? And I, you know, I went to a baseball game with this guy with two other classmates of mine. You know, we're only second year architecture students and we get taken down a dirt road that ends up being like maybe two miles from where we where we were working and living as a as a university program. Just back through the trees and down this dirt road was a sand lot, all African American baseball club that had been operating on this piece of land for seventy five years, eighty years, and a really high level uh, competitively of baseball with neighboring towns bringing teams. 400 people would be there in this town of 200 people. I went in um, and basically knew that that I was going to come back to this ball field and do my thesis project. And we didn't tell anybody about it either. The backstop there had been this chicken wire and, you know, cedar logs cut down right there. Some of the posts were probably trees coming out of the ground. You know, people kind of built their own benches and seats where they sat every week. It was really, you know, grown 
it was a really interesting experience because it was designed, but designed over 75 years. And we were really timid about, you know, pulling some of that apart, you know, to build something new. And when it finally came down to it, they were like, oh, that old thing? Let's go. I tore it down in four hours. And and then there we were. We had a project to rebuild that over the next couple of months. And that project ended up in the Whitney Biennial. Again, I was just there at, at such a great time. Sambo had been had been sick, had had leukemia, it was in recovery, and the paintings that were coming out of him and the projects that he was willing to take on, he'd won the MacArthur Grant, you know, all this great, th- all this just energy was out there, you know, and every weekend it was another film crew or a magazine or Oprah, or we knew what we were doing was being appreciated and, and it was exciting, and, and at one point the curator from the Whitney had called and wanted to talk to Sambo, and the big question was, you know, we didn't know if it was it Sambo's artwork, was it the Royal Studio, what was it? And they ended up saying we want to show three projects that you know represent the Royal Studio's work, and one of them was the Newburn Baseball Club's backstop. So we all got to go to the Biennial, and you know, quite a moment in our in our in our young art careers for Definitely. sure. <laughs> On your website, you mentioned I know you're collaborative, and you had that experience with Sam that you have a rule about working with clients that we have to get to know each other is what you write. And what's behind that philosophy? Well, I mean, I think it's rooted in the rural studio philosophy for sure. But I mean, for for me, really, it's it's that it's that we've got I mean, that's the real joy in it for me. And I, I think is getting to know, you know, getting to know the client and their kind of their aspiration of what it is that they're imagining that's going to, you know, that they need to do in their life. And, and, and I think sometimes we, we hope and want that it's just going to come out and that we can design it real quickly and just nail it on the first try. But I think what we learn is that it just tends to take a lot longer than that and comes out much more through the development of the relationship between not just the client and and the designer, but also the client, the designer, and the site that they're, they're going to be working on. Or, I mean, I think the most direct story from Rural Studio that comes to mind was was that while my teammates and I were at the Newburn Baseball Club, we were for the first several weeks of the project, we were cranking out designs, paper, 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 model, 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 over and over. And just not really getting anywhere, not feeling like it was getting anywhere. And we would try to hold meetings with the team and ask questions, and they'd give us pretty general answers about what would be this and what would be what would be good for that. And at, at the end of the day, I don't think the real breakthrough came until the day that I was sitting in the bleachers and 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 one of the teams, one of the other opposing teams, was short a player, and they called out to me to come play right field. And then and I remember having a moment out in the field. And looking and seeing my partner, Marnie, was braiding hair in the bleachers. And my friend James had made a friend who he was drinking beer with. And I'm out playing right field. This, suddenly there was a breakthrough in our, in, in our confidence of, as designers as, okay, we can do this. They trust us to do this. And they trust us to find what the right answer is. And it, it's not going to happen overnight. And it's not going to happen... In with one one sketch. I mean, you can look back at those sketches and might find some of the roots and the the important stuff in there. But it's not the solution comes out with a little bit of time and 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 getting to know each other. Really, it's like slow architecture. Absolutely. Design build adventure was deeply involved in the creation of El Cosmico, which is this very interesting lodging opportunity in Marfa, Texas, which involves vintage trailers, yurts, teepees, and an outdoor bathhouse. At some point during my graduate school education, I had the opportunity to meet Liz, and and she had told us about the work she was doing in Marfa with this El Cosmico project. And I think I had just started to talk about design, build, adventure. Kind of as a tryout, I was one of the producers of the, the first party out there, which was called the See It Before It's There. And we all basically, the same weekend that there's still the El Cosmico Festival, we all went out there and you know set up a little camp and had a party. And, and, and for the most part, that, was, that began the relationship with me and, and Liz and Bunkhouse and El Cosmico. And 
it was a good opportunity to exercise a lot of the rural studio kind of beliefs out there. And one of those is probably, I mean, I think at rural studio, we'd call it design, build, design, build, design, build, which is even though we think we're going to design and then build about halfway through build, we realize there's some more designing to do. And I think at El Cosmico particularly, you know, it, it actually the pace and the way that things go out there and the situation that the project was getting started in, that really worked really well. We weren't going to go out there and just pave it and build a hotel. It actually had to be much more organic than that to be an alternative lodging concept. While we were building El Cosmico, I would end up taking a lot of interns or young people with me um, and we would pack up in the van and the trailer and the welder and and lay all the tools out and pack all our bags you know make a real trip a pilgrimage out to Marfa and work for two weeks and and every day at noon we'd go to the food shark we'd be dirty bandanas dust and sweat and and everybody say what what in the hell are y'all doing and would tell people you know that we're here building and a lot of people would say, I want to come work with y'all. You know, this sounds fun. And I think that really led to, you know, again, the bigger discussion of the things that were going to happen at El Cosmico and that happened more organically. There was always a concept of events, workshops, but th this workshop grew very organically out of that. It's really a, a learning vacation. Camp Design Build Adventure is anybody that wants to sign up no matter what background we go and stay at El Cosmico and over four or five days work really closely with an organization called the Dare Sioux Collective and so they came to me and said we've got this project called East Side Play that we want to do which is taking this little piece of land and turn it into a little pocket park for this group of kids that was playing football on the street and the land was kind of donated for that purpose and so we knew we needed to build a shade structure and so last year we built, with 18 participants, we designed and built a shade structure in this park and amenities, some benches and some landscaping and a tether ball. This truly is a design build adventure where we are given the opportunity to design this next stage of this park. So we might determine that it's another shade structure. We could determine that it's a basketball court, that it's more furniture, that it's a fence. The discussion of what's next is a, com a conversation that the participants in the camp will have really intensely with the group of people that the Dare Sioux members and, and people that maintain the park and the kids that play at the park. And then we'll design, come up with some real quick intervention that we think is the right idea, and then execute it. And that's all in five days. All in five days. So it's pretty quick. You know, I have a pretty good idea of what's available in terms of materials around there. So I'm able to take them one day and show them like, hey, this is kind of the materials. And that's a big conversation again about what, what materials are available in this area and why. You know, there, there, there's not a lot of wood in that area. And I think that's probably because there's not a lot of trees growing out there. I was going to say, there's yeah. no shade either. Yeah. I vote for another shade structure. That's right, right. <laughs> You know, all the hardware stores sell this oil stem pipe that is recycled from the oil drilling industry, which is just the near, you know, Midland, Odessa. They bring that pipe down to, to West Texas, and that pipe is used in everything from corrals to sheds to, you know, fencing and, and in the ranching industry. And so that material is really abundant. Adobe, we'll go and visit Adobe structures and talk about Adobe. We're probably not going to stack Adobe while we're there, but we can talk about it and be inside it. So the, the whole workshop is basic construction techniques, but we also acknowledge at the very beginning that we're not here to save the world. It's just a nice, you know, we're here to work, but we want to learn a little bit about construction techniques. We'll learn a little bit about construction basics, layout. You know, I teach everybody how to use the transit and, and really try to read the site and interpret the site. So it's just a kind of a real basic introduction to design, build, and the adventure aspect is just all the great things that there are in Marfa to do. You know, we have this wonderful access to Chinati, the a great bookstore, you know, the ba ballroom Marfa, you know, and not only that, but just tremendous, tremendous artists and talent in, you know, that we can that give us studio tours or come and participate even in Cause there's a train through the ground
You've been listening to Fresh Talk with Jack Sanders. Read more about Jack's design build adventure and hear other podcasts in this series on freshartinternational.com. <laughs>